important session ahead of us. I'm so excited to get into it. Before we do, if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, we go live every Monday through Friday at 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time. Subscribe to the channel, hit the button, and get prepared to join us as we go ahead and prepare ourselves to conquer the markets. All right, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I am so glad that you are here. It is good that you are here. This is Jordan with Conquer Trading and Investing. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. We have a lot to talk about here today. First of all, thank you for all of your well wishes. Yes, yesterday we spent about seven hours in the emergency room. Downhill mountain biking is absolutely dangerous. The last time I did it was eight years ago. I, I broke, it was the first time I ever did it. I broke my collarbone. Took two Advil, walked down the mountain. I don't think I could ride. Again, yesterday, you got to be, thank you for your prayers, you know? All right, what else is going on? What are we looking at today? We got an important session ahead of us. It's going to be clear, it's going to be crisp, and it's going to be signal. As we begin over here, first, I want to start with K-Tone, right? Jordan, would there be a point where you decide to sell and announce it to CTM to avoid heading all the way down 80% holding bags, Right? You all know I told you, I will tell you when it's the cycle peak, the cycle top. I will tell you when I'm exiting and make that very clear, right? Well, well Jordan, right now, is there anything that would give you any type of, uh, you know, premature sell mid-cycle to avoid he heading all the way down 80%? Do you have a way to describe what that would look like? This chart makes it look appear unrealistically low, but listen, it's Bitcoin. Anything could happen, right? If the whales want to get in lower, they could do it. This is the chart that he's referring to, right? And this chart, we're just basically saying, listen, this isn't this red line over here would be an 80% drawdown. That seems a little bit weird. It seems unrealistic. All of these trend lines would be broken. It would be out of place. But hey, the fear right now is rampant. It could happen. What would that look like, Jordan? And more importantly, would you be letting us know if you're exiting early and why, right? And at the same time, as I answer that question, I also want to talk about this one over here this morning, Alan P., right? What, when is a bull market technically over? Before I talk to you about how to trade out of a correction, and then, by the way, is every bear market, is every single bear market we've experienced so far in the Bitcoin bull market, the bull of all bulls, has that has it been just a correction? Well, of course, but when you're talking 80, 85% corrections, it's quite severe. If you have the opportunity to sell the top and then position yourself back in, you have the you have the potential to accumulate a lot more Bitcoin, right? But when is a bull market technically over? I'm not an expert enough to know. This is Alan over here. For those holding crypto tokens down 80% or more, it definitely feels over. And just so everyone's clear, because going into the bull market phase, we were clear on conquering the markets on CTM over here that there would be two alt seasons. We were very clear about that. And we were I was very clear at the peak of all this one when to be looking for it and when to expect it. If you decided that you felt like you wanted to hold on to your altcoins because the gains they were making were pretty tremendous, well, that you knew what was happening. We had a pie cycle cross so far. We had the altcoin peak and then a capitulation crash. Well, we haven't had the capitulation crash yet. That could be in store. That could, we're, we're right now, right? We could take out this, this area over here and we could see, 
most of crypto Twitter, most people that I see or a lot that I see, not all of them, most of them believe that we are going to see a capitulation before this bull market resumes. We will see. Obviously, I don't know. Obviously, we don't know. He's not calling the, 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 the bull market. Alan's not saying the bull market's over. He's just curious of when do you say the bull market's over? It's a fantastic question. It's a question that sets up everything that we're going to discuss and talk about today. Look, the lengthening cycle theory, theorists would have a lot of explaining to do if this bull market was over, right? Because we would be looking at a massively shorter cycle, right? Would we be entering lengthening bear market phases to make up for it? You know, the prior two bear markets lasted approximately 12 months, both of them, 2014, 2018. Or are we going to see lengthening accumulation phases? How do you make up if we're seeing this, this hyper short bull market phase, right? By the way, there are two alt seasons within the bull market phase. And we do know, do you remember how we were talking about the Bitcoin dominance at the peak of the first alt season, Right. We all know that the last time to get into all coins, we've done exit series on, on CTM, right? Inside the CTM recommended playlist, talking about the second all season, if all the criteria continues to exist, setting it up. That's the last 30 days of the bull market. We showed exactly the entries for those. If you're holding alts right now, you know, I'm not so sure about that. But let's talk about it. A bull market. Let's start with K-Tone. K-Tone's asking... Right now, we're off 53%. It looks like we have the potential to go lower if we break down further. We could even have a capitulation event. We might not only have a capitulation event, right? A capitulation event would be bullish. A quick, sharp move down, followed by a spike up. People with both the bulls would love that. And then we would say, hey, listen, actually, as we are mid cycle, we ended all of that mid cycles with that capitulation event. That would that would stand to reason and rhyme. Now, this this one is absolutely different. What's different about it? We're seeing a rounding top. We're seeing a rounding top mid cycle. We might we have an extended consolidation that rounds out and comes up. Yeah, that's still in the cards as well. We don't know what's going to happen. We're off fifty three percent already, right? In the past, a bear market. By the way, by myself going into this bull market was defined very specifically. The bear market is from the cycle peak to the low. This 12-month period, that's the bear market for me. This one lasted 85%. This one right here in 2014. Now, this green one over here in 2018, it also lasted 12 months, and it goes from the cycle peak, and it went down 84% to the bear market low, right? So this is this current bear market that we're going to see in this cycle. Not that I believe the bear market has begun. I don't believe the bear market's begun. I believe we are mid-cycle. But we're going to enter a bear market. Will that bear market also last approximately 12 months? Will it also be approximately an 80-85% drawdown? We don't know. We could only say that the past two cycles have been that. Does that mean that the next one is going to also mirror that? It doesn't mean that. But that's my base case until it's broken. Now, and now b before I go on to the to the bear market, the K tone is asking me: Is there any point over here that I would exit? During if we're going to see an eighty percent drawdown, that's pretty significant. I, I want to be very clear with everyone so everyone understands because I don't want ever anyone to follow me. I want everyone to use me as a as a as a vantage point to get some clarity to make up their own decisions. But I will let you know exactly what I am doing. I will let you know exact as I have the whole way and before anything has happened, I've always let you know ahead of time what I'm gonna do. That included what? That included that I was not going to sell my spot Bitcoin during the bull market phase, right? I said that before the bull market breakout, during three ways to trade the bull market, I will not sell any of my spot during the bull market phase. Actually, I added. I And I told you when I added, why I'm adding, and how I added. Exactly when it was happening. So that as we go ahead and we continue forward, there's not going to be people being like, I wish I could have got Bitcoin back down around 30,000. Right? Around 35,000. Around 40,000. I, I told you that I was buying the dip. 
right? You wanted to know what the smart money was doing. I let you know exactly when it was happening, right? But there was a lot of fear. And by the way, if we capitulate down and we come back down towards 25,000 and or lower, how many people will buy the dip? I think most people will be so fearful that now we're going down to 18,000 or now we're possibly going down to 10,000 that very few people out there would actually buy the dip. I think they'll be more like deer in headlights, right? Personally, we'll see what happens. Now, I said to you, I am not going to sell my Bitcoin during the bull market phase. And I clearly still think that we're in the bull market phase. I think that we are mid-cycle and we are getting ready over these next few months into the end, into the end of the third quarter, 2021, to really begin breaking all correlations as this bull roars. And, I'm, and I truly believe it. In yesterday's video, I talked about the dates that we're looking at before we see Bitcoin potentially making new all-time highs. Did you see yesterday on Twitter, we had the parabolic guy saying also the same thing. I told you October 27th. He says by October 28th, everyone will have, everyone that's in Bitcoin will, will be positive, right? Now, listen, you heard it here first. All right, let's bring this back. K-Tone. I will not sell my Bitcoin at all over here. By the way, do you remember we we're talking about trading? Don't for, don't confuse trading and investing here on this channel because we talk about both for different people at different times, right? I was trading once technically we broke out of the bull market and all the way to that May 14th date, right? And by the way, nailing each and every repair with you. All right, now... I didn't sell my spot Bitcoin over here. I stopped trading. I got neutral. And I told you that things remain unclear. And I told you that things will not be clear until we break outside the most important trend line in crypto. Right? Now, people thought there was some confusion. People thought I sold my spot at that particular day. No, I'm not selling my spot. Right? K-Tone, if we come down over here another 80-85% and we, ch and we challenge, you know, if we're, is that $10,000? The 85% drawdown was a little bit, it's a little bit lower. It's, it's, it's $9,000. I'm bringing myself back towards my average buy-in. Towards my average, I don't have it exactly over there. My average buy-in, by the way, is right now just below 95,000. I would be a little bit, right around, I want to get it exact, right? There you go. I would be just above my average buy-in if we saw an 85% drawdown, but I would be a hold, I would be a fall, a a forced hodler. You all remember when I coined that term, a, for, a forced hodler? Someone who's hodling and holding Bitcoin and they're forced to do it. Now, I'm, I, 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 I worked everything out. I gameplay all this stuff out in my head all the time. I know that if Bitcoin continues going down and we're in a bear market and this was the top of this cycle over here, if this was the top of the 2020 halving, the, the four-year cycle, the 210,000 blocks, and when we come off 80, by the way, shorter cycles. How, what, 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 what? Now, Jordan did say, by the way, that he's watching for shorter cycles, right? I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the possibility of lengthening cycles. I watch for it. That's not my base case. I'm also looking for shorter cycles, but it would catch me off guard if this was the top and we saw a shorter cycle, something that is, is further from my base case. I give more probability of a lengthening cycle happening than a shorter cycle, right? But if this did happen, K-Tone, I'm not telling anyone at any point that they should sell and get out and wait to buy back in lower. I myself will be holding throughout that, even if it meant an 85% drawdown coming back into my average buy in place. And that would, that would I don't want to use even bad language. That would not be fun, Right? I would not be a happy camper if that's what took place and transpired. Of course, I would have wished that I took the pie cycle cross top, got out and just waited and waited and waited. But that, listen, no, th that's, that's part of the game. It's called calculated risks. You don't make calculated returns without taking calculated risks, right? There's no, there's no free lunch. There's no guarantee. It's the markets. If you're not thoughtful, if you're not calculated, you could lose everything, including your shorts and your shirt, right? It's yeah. So anyway, K Tone, I will not be telling people to exit. I myself would hold and be forced hodler if we came back down eighty five percent with a shorter cycle. 
I would be completely caught off guard seeing a rounding first wave over here that led to a, a bear market. One of the definitions I've given you for a bear market is that within the first six weeks, it comes off 70%. Now, I think we're past six weeks since the top over here, which was in April, right? So that, you know, by June, a bear market would have come off 70%, right? Now, it stands to reason that maybe and potentially the reason it didn't come off so far, if this is indeed a bear market and why I do not think it's a bear market, you know, the possibility exists that we could be seeing whatever people wanted to call it. You know, if people are calling it a mini bear market, well, that's crazy. I mean, that's just a double wave and a long consolidation within it, right? But if we come down, fit in the definition of a bear market in Bitcoin, which I defined from the beginning, coming off 80, 85% off the top, well, then it was a bear market, right? I will be a force, a force toddler. I want everyone to understand where, I, where I'm putting it out there, where I'm coming from. So no one's going to be looking back because we're only down 50% here saying, well, you know, J Jordan never gave me a sell signal. You know, I never had that, that, that opportunity to make my own decision because I'm holding. There's no, and I won't like it and it would be forced, right? But I, I never foresaw a shorter cycle occurring without any type of top that I was aware of, right? So everyone's clear on that. Now a bear market, in my opinion, is is the period from the blow off top to the capitulation low. It's that 12, it's been historically 12 months in the previous two cycles, right? It comes from the blow off top and the bear market starts, starts at the top. You don't go from where price breaks that 70% low, right here's that 70% low, Right here is that 70% low. You don't go from where price makes that 70% low and then the remaining 15% and call that the bear market. The only way it makes sense is exiting the top on the cycle peak. There's no other way. Exiting down below, you know, when price is off, whether you call it, you know, 30%, who's, who's calling a pullback on Bitcoin in a bull market, that 30% pullback, a bear market? There's nobody, right? From the very beginning, strategy number two, look for those at least 30% pullbacks. And then on the correction out, you're eating that, you're taking that, right? Scaling into that, right? Everyone's looking for 30% 30, 30 plus pullbacks during the bear market phase. That's the norm. Raul putting out there, expect a 50% drawdown in the bull market. Here's your 50% pullback, but in a bull market. So if you're a bear and you're looking to trade the bear market, when do you begin? Is it is it after a 40% pullback, right? Is it after a 50% pullback? You have to have some line in the sand. For me, it's at the cycle peak. Otherwise, I am holding Bitcoin and pushing this forward because I believe in the most important trade that matters. Now, let's talk about something very specific, right? When I say very specific, I mean, listen, how do you trade out of these corrections? If we are indeed of a, in a bear market, how are you managing it? How are you doing it? And what's it going to look like going forward? The mo I see a lot of people out there kind of like just flying off the off off their cuffs. They're they're changing that what they do each and every day, right? Just one day they're looking for more downside and they're saying Bitcoin's bullish. The next day they're buying the dip and they're just doing it all erratically, right? What how how have I been doing it? How do I do it and how will I continue to do it? Let's take a look at that. Let me erase this line over here because this line doesn't exist yet. It may, but it doesn't exist yet. There's only been one, since since we have gone ahead and pulled back here 50%, right? By the way, May 14th, things are very unclear. Things are very muddied. Someone just jumped into the pond and kicked up all the mud. They're no longer clear, get neutral. P.S. No, I did not exit my spot. I'm not gonna do that, right? So when, do, when was the first time that we said, okay, here's the first repair taking place. It's right over here. It's, o it's over. We've only taken one repair, right? This was the first and only repair taken. It's on this date over here, CTM. It's all on video. We do it live together each and every day. It was on the 28th of June, right? And that repair came, by the way, there's, you know, before I go forward even, even further, I want to make sure everyone's following what's going on in my mind. I have not asked you yet to go ahead and smash that like button, but if you're here and you appreciate the time, the love, 
spread go ahead and smash that like button if you're on the replay crew big shout out to you i'm glad you're here with us now the most important trend line in crypto it's connecting over here these two highs right and then we go like this and i say until we break this line whenever it is there's no clarity there's no momentum once we break that most important trend line in crypto i do believe it's going to be pretty quick until we take out that new all-time high Right now, whether that is next week, whether that's next month, or whether that's into you know September, when we break this eventually, at that point, we should make that new all-time high relatively quickly. That's when trading begins again for myself. That's when you'll see me active because I have momentum. Now, I don't, I don't sell Bitcoin, and I don't sell Bitcoin in a bear, in a bull market. And if you think that we're in a bear market and you're selling Bitcoin or for whatever reason, that's good. That's that's not my game plan. That's not my strategy. Now, looking back, you know, I, I would I would love to find someone not whatever. It doesn't even matter. Right. Uh, my 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 performance is my performance. Right. I don't know anyone else near there. Right. And, and part of that criteria is I'm not there shooting from the cuff. Right. I have a, a plan in place that I worked out and that I'm following. Right. I'm not bullish one day, bearish one day, getting chopped around. And let, this is a tough range to trade, by the way. Right. This is for the, all of us. There, there are many heroes trading this range, but there, but none of them were trading that. That that's what I find perplexing today. But people listen to this. People are out there and, and they listen to this and they're all. You know, Jesse's like, hey, wait a second. Before I started with Jordan and CTM and took the course, I back tested everything that he said on video. And I do that with everyone, right? I'm still with Jordan, right? What about everyone? So listen, you know, there are many heroes out there. Be careful, right? So my game plan is that I'm not selling Bitcoin during the bull market phase, right? I'll buy it. But I'm not I'm not trading it right now, and I'm not going to be trading it until this the most important trend line in crypto breaks. Then I could start trading again because I have momentum and I'm looking for that strong momentum on the bull of all bulls. Right now we talked about and that's connecting these two points. This is the genuine line over there. Now bring it back, dial it back a notch over here. Right. Once we had this come in over here at that point, I was able to draw in this dotted this dotted line of repair. Right. And that's when I said, as price broke that over here, that's that's our first entry. Now, two things. In the bull market, we don't have momentum right now. In the bull market, on crypto, on Bitcoin, when you get a trend line break, that's a buy. Very, very rarely, sometimes, but rarely, do you get a breakout, retest, and resumption. Often in crypto, it's breakout, right? So to be safe, you take the breakout. Right now, things are unclear. Things are we've lost momentum. Right? Do you want to be taking breakouts right now, or do you wait for the breakout retest repair? I don't have that answer for you. For me myself, I still take the breakout. Okay. Now I don't know which is better. That's for you to decide. For you to discern. Right now, nevertheless, in this case, you could see I would take the breakout. There is a breakout retest resumption in this particular instance over here that occurred, right? That's up for you to decide. But nevertheless, this one repair that has been taken, right, so far is still in play. Stop loss down at the low, first repair is in play. This is your risk, right? What's your reward? Your Is your, is, is your reward into the most important trend line in crypto? As we talked about taking this trade, that's a place to perhaps take some off. Or is it the new all time high? Or is it the cycle peak? Right. For me, I'm looking to push those trades to push trades. Now, we're going to talk about it very clearly. All right. That's your risk, though. Obviously, what I'm getting at over here, your risk to reward to the upside is massive. Now, this trade, you know, this trade stays open until it's stopped out. That's the it stays open until it's stopped out. It's not yet stopped out. So the first repair is still in play. If it does get stopped out over here, what happens next? is a new trend line is going to be drawn. And unfortunately, I can't draw it from the top. And I can't draw it from the top since we never had a blow-off top, right? So because of we're not having a blow-off top, 
this little guy over here, this is where I'm drawing my repairs in from. I would prefer to be drawing it in from over here, and I just want everyone to know that it's this most important trend line in crypto that I, well, there's a reason I named it the most important trend line in crypto, right? And that's the one that really matters. But if you're looking to get cute, and if you're looking to really do this as on a, on a, on a, uh, on as low as a time, time, excuse me. If you're looking to do this with a short time preference, this is how you do it. All right. Well, I got so confused over there. Sorry about that. All right. The net, if this gets stopped out over here, first repair is still in play. Risk, very minimal. Always know your risk. This is a game of risk management, right? If we get stopped out over here, I don't know where price stops. I have no idea where price stops, whether or not we see some type of prolonged down leg and then further consol consolidation around 25,000 and then another down leg into 20,000. That could happen. Or if we see some type of capitulation, it's quick and then price shoots out of it. That could also happen. Or if we never take out this low over here, that could also happen, right? Those are the those are the three situations that could happen. But I do know if I take out the low, the next thing I do is draw in this next line, this next trend line over there, and then I wait for price to break that. That will be the next entry. That low is the is the next stop, and then I have my risk, which is going to be very minimal compared to my upside potential, and that continues until the low is in. It is the best, most efficient way to trade out of a correction. And a bear market in Bitcoin, by the way, is only a correction, right? Now, when you're talking about 80, 85%, that's massive. If you can make money out of that and accumulate more Bitcoin because of it, of course, that's the smartest thing you can do. By the way, each and every one of these corrections, it's, this, it's all on video. Every single one of them, we did it the same exact way coming out of these corrections. Every single one of them. By the way, let me show you where it started failing. You all know, right? This one over here. By the way, I took the 55,000 entry on this one. And then I took a 53,000 loss. That was my first loss, that $2,000 on Bitcoin for the whole bull market, right? Talk about managing your risk. You all remember when I did it. I was a little aggressive on the entry. I took an entry at 55,500 and I exited at 53,000. A twenty five hundred a twenty five hundred dollar loss on Bitcoin, my first one, right? And then I set it correctly, right? Entry over there, right? What happened? You know, exit also right right above entry on May fourteenth, right? I didn't wait for the stop to come out over there. I got out when things became unclear, right? Matt done correctly. Now let's go back and let's look at a bear market. Let's look at the at the massive bear market over here, two thousand seventeen. First repair line in place. That's not the first one. Sorry, that's the last one. Let me go ahead and draw that in for you. Where are we looking? I'm sorry that it, I'm sorry that it, let me zoom out. That is the first line of repair. Over here is the, the first swing high, that line of repair in. It breaks over here, right? So this is the first entry over here. Stop loss down at the low right? This is your risk. Your reward, you know, is what? Massive to the upside, right? You're ma you can't get a better risk to reward. And by the way, why everyone doesn't know what's going on over here, you are taking a calculated risk. What's a calculated risk? You know that if you take enough of them, the odds are in your favor. This is going to play out in your favor. This trade goes on for a while and it eventually is stopped out, right? It's stopped out in this business over here. Right. Once it's stopped out, what's next? Let me clean up my chart really quick. Let's keep go. This is the most important lesson people. Whoa! This is the most important lesson people could be learning today. So we're gonna cover it. That's what we do here. Next, after that stopped out, you go ahead. You draw the trend line from this top over here. That's the last. That's the last one over there. You get the entry down over here. Right. Here's your next entry. Here's your stop loss. That's a tight stop loss. That's a massive risk to reward. I love that. All right, so what happens? On this one, you actually went over three to one into profit. This one, no, no, right? This one is three to one to profit. You're working out whether or not you're moving your stop loss to break even, whether or not you're taking anything off. I'm not talking about that right now. I will be during the bear market 
as we're trading out of it for sure. That's a lesson for a different day. This one's also stopped out, not over here, but over here, right? So now you have two small stop outs, right? A lot of people struggling for these past, let's call it 11 months, 10 months, and you've had two small calculated stop losses. Oh, guess what? You're doing your job and you're doing it well. But what's next? All right. Well, now we know. We stopped out again. All right. No big deal. I'm going to get it right. You know, next over here. Boom. Next. This is the next, the next out of edge high over here. This is your entry over here. All right. I don't know. If, is this one going to get stopped out again? I have no idea. But I know that my stop loss over here. Wow. That's a my risk to reward. Is absolutely massive. Absolutely. Just into where we peaked out at that 14,000 into the trend line. By the way, you don't know that at the time. You don't know that at the time. My target out of here was 8,400. I thought that's what's going to happen. We went much higher, right? But either which way, massive risk reward. This is not until price makes the new all-time hot. Look at that, right? And that, and that, my friends, winds up being the low of the Bitcoin bull market. That's how you trade out of a correction. And that's the only thing that you should be doing right now as we continue. Now, whether or not you decide that this line over here is the one that you're waiting for for that repair because that's the first outer hedge or you're following me getting a little intricate over here and playing it like this and that you know again we didn't have a blow off top it makes it a little bit harder for finding the top and i don't i don't have a crystal ball either i don't know which is correct i don't know if it's well you all know you all know right there's a reason that's called the most important trend line in crypto nevertheless i think it's fine going ahead and taking as we took the first repair right so how else and what else over here you know oh well, i have to share this with from keith over here proud student here from jcl capital ctm got me in early may 2020 and i'm out i make my own decisions jordan I, I value your analysis. I listen to your al analysis. But when we had that trend line break, remember the special session we did with Brad's trend line? If you're not out below this, you're dead wrong. 54,000 and Elon's tweet at 52,000. I've been flipping profit since the first bottoming. Maybe again. Sounds great. I'm ready, locked, and loaded. Show us the way, Jordan. By the way, before taking JCL, JCL Capital's course, I was a novice trader at best, and my TA was through eyeballing Robinhood. Now I can chart with the best of them and spot price action to pretty aggressive levels. Sometimes I think JCL Capital has a PhD in psychology, keeping us all balanced. Thank you, Keith. Thank you for that. Thank you for helping building me up. I appreciate that. I take pleasure in building you all up. That's I love it. Thank you for taking the time to build me up as well and share your experience. I'm grateful for that, my brother. And I'm grateful for all of you. It's a very short session today, a very important and powerful session, but it's a very short session today. Everyone, I'll see you all tomorrow. We'll do it again. Thanks for being here. Thanks for spending the time. And if you haven't yet, please go ahead and smash that like button. George, I, I, I meant this. I mean, this is so true. Listen, if we're in a bear market now, then there was no way for me no, to know ahead of time. And I will be a, fall, a force holder. K-Tone, I want everyone to be clear about that. You're not going to get, if this is the top and we come back down 85%, I am a, for, a force holder. I had no way of knowing in advance. And I will be holding, and I'm certainly not going to sell my Bitcoin down there, Right. I, look, I'm not selling my Bitcoin. It's it's the most important trade that matters for a reason. 
would everything be highly unusual if this is what? Yeah, I don't think it's going to occur. That's not my base case whatsoever. If it happens, you know, again, George, the only way I knew was after it happened. And I'm certainly looking to what? Continue to accumulate Bitcoin down at $10,000, right? Now, a lot of people at 30000 50000 60000 would have loved $10,000 Bitcoin. I doubt if we came off to 10000 that many of those same people would be looking for 10000 Bitcoin because they're looking for 5000 Bitcoin or 3000 Bitcoin at that time. I myself, not only would I not give up my position, I would do my best to continue to add to it. That's just me, right? Not financial advice. Make your own decisions and understand the risk you're taking. There's always a few it's the internet it's all types of people right so andrew he was telling his family to buy at fifty eight thousand. where'd you get that number from fifty eight thousand? that's a that's a funny one how is that now how is that calling the pie cycle i don't know andy what you're talking about andrew i don't think you know what you're talking about either my brother big hug to you lots of love i, I don't i don't think you know what you're talking about you know so you know i certainly don't but lots of love to you really keep coming back one day at a time you're gonna get there you're going to get there, Andy. Andrew, that's for sure. I was talking with my brother-in-law the day before yesterday, though. You know, uh, brother-in-law also in finance. He, come on. For years, I made the bullish case for Bitcoin. They took, you know, took small positions when, when able. And, 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 you know, he was telling me, you know what? I'm using this. I wasn't telling him. He was telling me, I'm using this opportunity right now as Bitcoin's 50% off the high. Off the high. And I'm actually increasing my position. And I let him know. I'm doing the same thing. I bought the dip. The same exact thing. You know, the people who see things clearly, right? They have the potential to change their lives, right? The people who are so confused, they don't know which way is up. You know, a lot more of the same. But don't worry, the 10 years is going to come. Like it or not. Like it or, or, or not, you know, time is going to, you can't stop the time, right? And And, you know, Go back over here, 2019, I'm letting you know the way that I'm viewing this, right? How is Jordan viewing this over the next three halving cycles? I'm looking to make an investment to carry it over the next three halving. Now, that's only two. You know, there's only two left for me. There's still going to be three more halving cycles. And if you're just starting today, maybe that's the type of view and mentality you want to take, you know? Nevertheless, throughout these halving cycles, there's massive opportunity these opportunities present themselves not when we have a rounding mid-cycle double wave. For me, that was not an opportunity, right? I'm not a clairvoyant, right? Now, if we get a cycle peak and a blow off top, that provides me with the opportunity. There's risk in doing it, by the way. You know, we talk about super cycles and the last cycle because there, there's always risk. And exiting Bitcoin at the top, you know, it, you listen it might not be the top of the bear market price may come back up we but ctm we've talked about how to get back in in our exit series in our training programs we talked about what that would look like and how you would act and what you would do right now this over here mid cycle if this is the top we entered a bear market that was i was never that was never in the plan for myself forced hodler no question about that right now cuz cuz hodlin's my game plan you know Hodlin over the next three halvings, by the way, it's only two, right? This is now only nine. Time keeps running. And by the way, some of you checking in with me, this will be like, you know, in three years, you're going to check in with me and I'm going to be like, oh, now I'm only playing for one halving, you know, and I'll, 
That's what's going to keep happening, right? Because the time's going to keep going. And some of you are going to wait seven years before you start what you could start today, right? But if your plan is to sell Bitcoin, you know, I think you're doing it wrong unless you're t able to take one of these opportunities. If you get the opportunity, you only get the opportunity if you have a blow off top. Otherwise, the opportunity is not there and your game plan continues. Boom, as, as planned. All right, everyone. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you for making mine. love to hear that back to the block i love to hear that that's that's you doing the work right that's you doing the work I appreciate that, my brother. Listen, I'm not going to be live streaming during uh, the presentation with Elon and Jack. That's something that you all should definitely watch. But, you know, we, we, we prepared for it a week. As soon as it was announced, we prepared for what was happening and what that could mean. If you haven't yet, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. We need some head snack up in here. Let's get them on. Let's close this out with some head snack here on this Taco Tuesday. We're going to drop them right now. Analyzing the charts, hitting projected targets within the margin. Find the flow, sip the matcha, and wait for the waves to come in with lobsters. The kind hearted Jordan Fosters, working smarter, not harder to move the markers. On his way to conquer, trading and investing, drinking the coffee while reflecting on the blessing. The markets are not crashing, the prices might be slashing just to pretend they're in fashion. Hit the like button, comments, and smash it. Boom, boom, Jordan in the room, grab the bull by the horns, or do the move. Flow from the plateau, make the play. Boom, boom, it's a taco day. Headstack, biggest shout outs to Headstack. Thank you for going ahead and creating this awesome track for us. Grateful for it, grateful for all of you. Have a beautiful day, everyone, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.